Good evening, everybody. Allow me to speak in my mother tongue in Italian. Cari... Dear parents and uh, sons of Daphne, dear Miss Cold, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, a year has elapsed since the barbarous slaying of Daphne Caruana Galizia. And now we are here in Strasbourg to honour her bravery, to recall her life and her works, and to continue to do our utmost. There are half a billion European citizens represented by the European Parliament and we all wish uh, to uncover the truth. Uh, the murderers endeavoured to try and silence the investigation into the truth. We called for there to be an international investigation. We have not achieved the outcomes we would have hoped for. The material perpetrators were arrested and that was it. Uh, we are talking about a journalist who was not dealing with petty criminals in her inquiries. She was dealing with more important criminals. We wish to know who was behind the killing in a country under rule of law, as all EU countries should be, it should be expected that citizens be entitled to know who commissioned the slaying of Daphne Caruana Galizia. Alas, those who ordered this have not been uncovered. We hope they will be tracked down in an active and vigorous fashion. As far as I am concerned, I will not r relent. I will continue to address this until those who ordered the murder uh, are detected. I'm saying this as a journalist, a European citizen and as president of the EP. We want the truth to be uncovered. Uh, she was a, a frontline soldier, was Daphne, in this fight. And thank you, thanks to the free and independent press, she stood up for democracy, rule of law and freedom of expression. The example of Daphne should not be forgotten. As with other vice presidents and uh, questers in the Bureau, we have decided to name this press room in Strasbourg after Daphne Caruana Galizia. So this room will be inextricably linked to Daphne by dint of a, a, a picture of Daphne. As with hundreds of millions of European citizens, we were all struck by the murder of this journalist. Marie-Louise Colt has uh, been so kind as to prepare this work of art uh, to reflect uh, the life and works of Daphne. Parliament. This work of art is all the more reason for people uh, to visit the House of European Democracy. Uh, this work will complete our press room, reflecting our uh, keenness to stand up for, uh, for journalists and freedom of expression. Alas, after Daphne Caruana Galizia, we saw the slaying of another a journalist uh, and in the, uh, the Slovak Republic. This is not acceptable. A free and democratic world should not see the killing of those who speak the truth. If somebody tells lies, then uh, this should be taken to court. A few days ago, in the Saudi consulate, we saw the killing of Mr. Khashoggi because he wrote and spoke out against politicians. We want there to be an international inquiry. We trust that the Saudi authorities let the world know who was 
behind this, who planned this. I'm not just talking about the material perpetrators of the death of Mr. Kasogi. We will continue to stand up for our values. Without a free press, there is no democracy. Without critical journalism, uh, there are no other uh, tools to goad politicians uh, to do better. Thus, we are conducting a battle to uncover the truth as to the murder of Daphne Caruana Galizia. It, we are waging a political and moral battle. We will do our le level best. Even after I leave the Parliament, I will do my utmost uh, uh, to uncover the truth. I, I said this in plenary. In Malta, we have always seen a compliance with the rule of law, but now a journalist has been murdered uh, just because she was uh, pr provocative. If there is such a barbarous slaying as that of Daphne, there is clearly something awry. Thank you very much uh, for your attendance. Thank you to the family members. I know you must feel a tremendous grief for the loss of Daphne, but uh, this grief will not erase the memories you have of uh, Daphne. And uh, uh, we politicians and journalists remain her friend, and we are close to you, family members. We would like to duly acknowledge what happened uh, to your daughter, your wife and so on. We acknowledge your pain and grief. We cannot erase this pain and grief, but be aware that we stand side by side with you and we will continue to stand with you uh, because it's only right and proper uh, that a woman like uh, uh, your daughter is recalled for the courage she showed.
Thank you very much, Mrs. Kolb. Thank you for your engagement in favor of Daphne. And also, I want to thank you for your decision to put this very good image in the European Parliament. Thank you very much. You have the floor. Mr. President, thank you for inviting me. I know that you, as a journalist, also feel particularly strongly about the assassination of Daphne Caruana Galizia. To Daphne's family, I would like to say thank you for your integrity, your dignity, and your warmth. Members of Parliament, esteemed members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here. The assassination of a journalist is not just a crime against one individual. It strikes at all of us. It is a fundamentally horrific blow to everyone's rights. And in Malta, both the context and the aftermath are also vehemently divisive and political. As an artist, I have not often ventured into political issues, but this one ventured into me. I have been partly living and working in Malta since 2011, and I am married to a wonderful Maltese man. The country feels like home, and it inspires me massively. Following the assassination of Daphne Caruana Galizia, I had no choice but to act to do whatever I could as a professional artist. I wanted to not only honor this fearless journalist, but also help keep her memory alive. Also in the face of those, not least her murderers, who would prefer to eradicate her memory. I already knew Daphne Caruana Galizia as a journalist. Over the past year, <laughs> I have spoken to Daphne's husband, and I have visited their home. And I have also gotten to know a woman who put art and beauty before practicality, and who consistently put integrity before convenience, and even before her own safety. Including all of my research and experiments, creating this portrait has taken a total of 470 hours. The copper portrait was deeply etched in a nitric acid bath for eight days. This created different levels on the surface, bringing out the motif. And while I normally use chemicals to achieve different colors, in this portrait, I filled in the etched areas with printer's ink, ink from one of the printing presses that used to print Daphne Caruana Galizia's words. Without wanting to illustrate the many facets of her life, I did want to give her a human context. In the side of the portrait, I integrated elements from her life, created from etched and patinated copper, bronze, and brass. Books and dogs and elephants that she loved. Leaves from her garden, her sanctuary. Article 11 from the EU's Charter of Fundamental Rights about freedom of expression and information, and Daphne's own last words. When a journalist is killed, we are all worse off. We all lose. She was controversial, but whether you agreed with her or not, unless you're a criminal or corrupt, you lose. When integrity becomes a scarcity and entitlement and impunity spread, we cannot be silent. When freedom of speech is attacked, we all have to roar with outrage. And when time passes and no one is held to account, that outraged roar doesn't fade. It multiplies in strength and in volume. It manifests itself in ways that cannot be silenced. This portrait 
is my roar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maurice, for your speech, for your engagement, for your kind words in defense of freedom, in defense of the journalists, and I am speaking as journalists. But the European Parliament decided to organize a prize in name of Daphne Caruana Galizia and Mr. Kujak. We are working on this. My Secretary General is preparing a strategy for a prize starting next year for journalists, investigative journalists. Now, Mr. Caruana, the husband of Daphne, you have the floor. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, this isn't really going to be a speech. I haven't prepared anything formal. But it's a big thank you to President Tajani and, of course, to Mary Louise, the artist, for what she's produced. It's amazing. I haven't seen it before today. I saw a couple of photos. But obviously, photos don't do it justice. Uh, all I can say, I don't know, is that had Daphne been here, she would have loved it, she would have bought it, she would have hung it up in the best room in the house. And she loved, she had a passion for anything that was unique, anything that was different, anything original. And this qualifies on all counts, I think. Um, I say this also on behalf of my sons and the rest of her family, I'm sure who are here with us, um, but I think a part of her will still be alive in this room in Strasbourg, alive and kicking as she always was. Thank you. The son, the son of Daphne. Do you want to add? I don't know. Okay, just just to say thank you, really. Um, it, it's it's difficult to to overstate how important this is. Um, what you've done today for my mother's memory and for for justice in Europe, it's it's just incredibly important. So thank you. Thank you very, very much for your engagement in defense of the family. You are working hard in defense of democracy, justice, and freedom. You are following the example of your wife and your mother. It's an example, of, of course, for you, but also for us. Thank you very much for coming.